What's up, my mathletes? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take an absolute value function and write it as a piecewise defined function. So first, we're gonna take a look at some things graphically with that. And when we do these, all right, one of the things we're gonna take a look at is really, you know, we've gotta pay attention. We're gonna write each piece of our piecewise function in a slope intercept form. But first, let's just review real quickly. Uh, an absolute value function has this general format, y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. So those values are gonna come in handy when we go to do the graphing, but also when we write our piecewise defined function. And one of the things that when we separate this, we're gonna use this uh, format, f of x equals, and I have our two pieces. The top piece is always gonna be the left side of the absolute value function. The right side is going to go on the bottom. Now here's the kicker. When you know the value of h, that number is gonna go here and here, and that's it. So those are gonna be some things that we'll work with as we go through and look at a couple of examples here. So first, let's take a look at example number one. Now, when we take a look at this example, notice there's no nothing in front of the absolute value, so we know that value is one. So the h value, or the a value is just one. That tells me that the graph is going to open up. So generally speaking, it's going to look like that. Now the h and k value, be careful, remember, don't forget, flip the sign of the h value. So positive one, the opposite of that is negative one. And then the k value is two, so that's gonna give me a vertex of negative one, two. So I'm gonna go over to my graph, go over to negative one, up to, put a nice little dot right there, and that's where my uh, vertex is going to be. Now, also, I know that my h value is negative one, so I can already write this in those two pieces right there. Now let's graph this. So when we go to graph it, I know my a value is one. So I'm gonna have two slopes. One's gonna be positive one, one's gonna be negative one. So on the right-hand side, we're gonna go up one, over one, up one, over one. And we're just gonna plot those dots as far as we can on that side. Now, because an absolute value graph is symmetrical, we'll use the same movement pattern on the other side. So we're gonna go up one, but to the left one, up one, left one, up one, left one, and up one, left one. And then I would go ahead and connect the dots, draw a nice straight line so it looks like a V and not a U because a U would be a parabola and that is not what we're graphing here. So we've got our V, we've got our absolute value function graphed right there. Now this is pretty cool because uh, I've got my graph and I'm gonna take a look and see if I can figure out a couple of pieces. Now, I'm gonna draw the axis of symmetry right down here and just kind of use that as a dividing line. So of course, this is gonna be the right side and this is gonna be the left side. And in between our uh, negative one was where everything was divided, where my axis of symmetry was. So on the left-hand side, there's gonna be a couple things I want us to notice. One is going to be what's the slope of the left-hand side. So some people will write it, kind of underneath it, they'll just write m equals. And if I look there, my slope is gonna be negative one. On the right-hand side, so if I start at any point and go to the next point to the right of it, I'm gonna determine that my slope on the right-hand side is gonna be negative one, or positive one. So my slopes are gonna be opposite on each side. The left side and the right side are gonna have opposite slopes. Now what that kind of leads me to is part of my absolute value function being changed into a piecewise. So on the left-hand side, the left goes on top, remember. So I'm gonna have negative one X or just negative X for the slope. And the right-hand side is gonna be positive one X or just X. So those are gonna be a couple things that we can tell right off the bat from just pulling the slopes. Now I wanna call your attention to the right-hand side first because that one's super easy. I can just look at the graph and determine what the y-intercept is because I can look at it and it's right there. And I can see that the y-intercept here is at the point zero three. So that's my b value because remember we're writing each part in this y equals mx plus b in that point or in the slope intercept form. So my y-intercept is three for the right-hand side. And I actually wrote down left, so let me fix that. So that's gonna go down here. So that's the equation for the, the piecewise function on the right-hand side. But on the left, it's not really quite clear what the y-intercept is. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of move a little bit. So let me erase that, get that out of the way. And we're gonna just kind of continue that movement pattern. And if I start here at the vertex and go down one to the right one, 
I actually land right on the y-intercept. I land on a lattice point, which is so cool because I can tell the coordinates of that point right there are zero, one. So my left-hand side is gonna have the equation negative x plus one. So that I can actually tell from the graph, just looking at the graph, I can come up with that piecewise function. So this would be my final answer right here for writing that piecewise function as um, from the absolute value function, y equals the absolute value of x plus one plus two. Now, we don't always get so lucky with both the y-intercepts uh, for each piece being a lattice point. And if you don't know what a lattice point is, that just means it lands on the crosshairs and is a nice whole number. It's an integer. So we don't have to worry, it's, is it like 2.5 or 2.4? It's not anything like that. It's just right on the crosshairs to be an integer. Now, when I take a look at this, so to verify this algebraically, all right, algebraically, I want to kind of go back here to the two slopes. All right, and we're going to pick a point on the left and we're going to pick a point on the right. So I'm going to pick this point right here, which is negative four up to five. So negative four, five. And I remember that my slope on that side was a negative one. So my left side point is negative four, five. I want you to write that down. Next, what we're going to write down is our general slope formula, y equals mx plus b, our slope intercept form of a line. Now on that left hand side, I know my slope is negative one. So I'm gonna substitute negative one for the m and the x value I'm gonna pull from my x, y coordinate. That's negative four. And b, I don't know, but the y value is five. So from this point, it's just arithmetic. So five is gonna be equal to four plus b. And if I subtract four from five, I end up with one. So that means that left side is gonna have the equation y equals negative x plus one. All right, well, that wasn't so bad. Now I wanna check, does that match what I came up with graphically? And yes, yes, it does match, so that's cool. Now, for the right-hand side, and I don't know why it didn't copy, but there's an S right there. Okay, so the right side point, that piece is going to also, I'm gonna pick some point on the right-hand side, and I'm gonna pick this guy right over here, which is what, two, and five, okay, so two, five is gonna be my x, y point for that. Now on the right-hand side, my slope on the right-hand side was positive one. My slope on the right-hand side was positive one. So again, start out by writing y equals mx plus b, just so you get in that habit, and then eventually you'll be able to skip the for writing the formula, and you'll just be able to jump right into substituting. So five is gonna go in for the y, one is gonna go in for the x, and or for the m and then two goes in for the x when i clean this up with my arithmetic i'll get five equals two plus b and you want that when you subtract you'll get three for the value of b which then tells me that my equation for the right hand side would be y equals one x or just x plus three and again does that match what was going on up there you bet it does on the right hand side so that's how you can go ahead and graph a piecewise function and use that to help you, or graph an absolute value function and use that graph to help you write a piecewise function. And if the graph doesn't give you the two pieces, now we also know how to determine the piecewise function algebraically once we get a couple of points from the graph and we determine the slope. All right, so that's it for this video. This was example one. You guys have a great day. Make sure you tune in for examples that follow this one for more practice. Catch up with you later. Peace out.